Mr. Chairman and members of the Transgender Equality Task Force and Caucus, my name is Katherine Hyde. In my day job, I work for Enterprise Community Partners. In my off hours, I work on behalf of my trans daughter and other families like ours as a volunteer regional director for the Mid-Atlantic Region and on the National Board of Directors of PFLAG. PFLAG is an organization comprised of parents, families, allies working with the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender community, moving equality forward through education, support, and advocacy. As a parent of a trans child, I am so grateful that the Transgender Equality Task Force is being created. We want for our children what all parents want for their children, that they live happy, productive lives. And in order to do that, they must be safe. Our fear for our children's safety, something all parents share, is heightened and exacerbated because they happen to be trans. You see, my husband, a former Marine, and I brought into this world a child we did not understand and did not know how to parent. Gender identity is an inherent part of who we are. We are born with it and it cannot be changed, but very few people understand that. My husband and I get it. I mean, we lived with our trans child for 15 years without understanding. But ignorance is not benign. When our four-year-old son wanted tutus and Barbies, a psychologist who did not understand gender encouraged us to allow only boy toys and clothing, supposedly helping. Two years later, our six-year-old was threatening suicide. Suicidal ideation in young trans children is common. In fact, trans people attempt suicide 25 times the norm, and one in two of our children will have attempted suicide at least once before they turn 18. So back to a therapist we went who diagnosed depression and anxiety. Now that's understandable since we had essentially been shaming this child. But again, there was no mention of gender. We did not get educated and we did not stop the shaming. Ignorance, you see, is harmful. My child was 15 when I learned what transgender means and how it can manifest in even very young children. As we got educated, we recognized that our child was transgender. We allowed our child to transition in 10th grade and her depression and anxiety steadily lifted. But the harassment at school did not. Students regularly called her pervert and freak. And though her friends stuck up for her, only one adult ever intervened. The harassment culminated when a police officer humiliated my child in front of the entire senior class because he did not understand transgender. When an authority figure openly mocks trans people, what license does that give to the bullies? Ignorance is dangerous. Trans people are disproportionately targeted for violence. In one study of the, of the LGBT population, trans people accounted for 40% of the police-initiated violence and 20% of its murder victims. Ignorance can be deadly. In our everyday lives, our kids are pretty mainstream. They go to school, they play with friends, they argue over bedtime and curfews. And our issues with them are mostly about things completely unrelated to their gender identity. Clean your room, do your homework, get a job. <laughs> and we want for our kids what all parents want for their kids, that they'd be safe, happy, and healthy. But when you parent a trans child, the fear for their physical and emotional safety is a constant anxiety. Because they are trans, our children are being harassed at school, at work, and on the streets threatened with expulsion, denied housing, and fired from or denied jobs. And too many of our children are suicidal or victims of violent crimes. Early in our journey, one day after school, my daughter did not come home on time and did not answer her phone. I was horrified something terrible had happened and rushed to school to find her. As I drove through the wooded area that lines the street leading to the high school, my eyes kept searching the woods. I was looking for her body. I was terrified that someone had attacked or even killed her. You can help us, please. We need comprehensive legislation to protect our children in school, at work, and in public places. You know better than I, legislation engenders education and replaces ignorance with understanding. And it is understanding that will help keep our kids safe and allow them to grow into the productive members of society that we all want them to be. Our families need your help. Thank you. It's very important that we as a society help families support their children. When a child comes out to you as trans and you're unprepared and your community, be it a, a 
ethnic community or a faith community or your own neighborhood is unprepared to help you support that child, it becomes somehow, it feels like an option to ask that child to leave. A lot of parents simply don't understand. They think that by saying you can't be that way under my house means that the child could change. They just don't understand. If they understood that the single strongest factor that helps our children avoid these horrible risks that we're talking about is family acceptance and family support, I think the parents would find it in themselves to, to learn, to come to understand these special snowflakes and to give them a better, uh, uh, to give them warmer welcome in their home. I really think that we could go far in helping in our schools by educating, which is really the, the theme you're hearing here today. If we can understand that this is part of nature's diversity or God's creativity, whatever your lens is, that this is a natural human experience and one that we should cherish and hold close to our heart instead of fear and push away. I believe that would go very far. Thank you.